This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to an adventure fantasy novel. The Desolate Era. Book 27, 12 Palaces. Chapter 21, Tenacity. Within the Sword Palace's Silver Cloud World. The rest of the altar was now completely silent. Still, Ning merely made a note of it as he then continued to fight all out against the golems on each level of the altar. Rumble. Boom. Explosions rang out unabated. His Dao Water and Dao Lightning were combined into a formation of tremendous power, but at this point they were having a limited amount of impact on the increasingly powerful golems. Still, for someone at Ning's level, even a limited impact would make things much simpler. Level 400. Level 500. Ning continued to advance. His most powerful technique was the Bright Moon, Sword Art, and it was guaranteed that in the long run it would always be his most powerful technique. Once he became a Dao Lord, he would have his own path and that path would always allow him to unleash the most power possible. By then, the other sword arts would merely provide him with guidance and experience, helping him enhance his understanding of the Tao of the sword. However, his greatest power would forever lie within the bright moon sword art. The same was true for other experts of the Tao of the sword. Their strongest sword arts would be the ones they created. Break. Heavenbreaker Stance. Shadowless Stance. Soulheart Stance. Inyang Stance. Blood Drop Stance. The five stances of Bright Moon. And Ning had now infused them with the sword intent of reincarnation, making his five stances into a continuous cycle that flowed with no weaknesses or flaws whatsoever, allowing him to unleash even more power in battle. Of the five, Bright Moon, stances, Ning's strongest stances were the Inyang stance and the Soul Heart stance. These two were both defensive techniques. Ning had put a tremendous amount of effort into his unicorn's domain, making him somewhat stronger in the area of defense. Hey, Woodflower. That's the kid who just became a sword lord in your palace, right? He actually made it to the 500th level. Dao Lord Severtrip suddenly called out in surprise. Mm-hmm, Lord Woodflower nodded, revealing a smile as he watched Ning advance non-stop. It is pretty impressive for him to have even made it past 500. It seems this Dark North kid has some talent. A pity that he entered the sword palace a bit too late, Dao Lord Yin Wind said, attempting to pour some cold water on their excitement. Dao Lord Woodflower didn't argue. Even he could tell that although Ning's sword arts were profound, they also had noticeable flaws compared to the skills of Prince Great Joy or Saber Lord Reds now. Ji Ning sword arts were average amongst the sword lords who had been acknowledged by the ancient pagodas. It must be understood that he had only been acknowledged a mere century ago. For him to be considered average amongst the 67 most talented world-level cultivators in the kingdom was already quite impressive. The 500th level was a fairly average level. Many geniuses were unable to make it much farther past this level. Ning had three heads and six arms, and he wielded a violet jewel in each of his six arms as he fought with all his might. Lightning and torrents of water exploded through the air unabated, doing their best to slow down and affect the impending golems. Hush. A golem suddenly transformed into an enormous wave of water that came crashing down towards Ning. Ning hurriedly used his Dao Lightning and Dao Water to defend, but they were quickly submerged within the enormous wave, and it continued its crashing assault. Inyang Stance. Ning's six swords simultaneously struck out. This was a stance meant to deal with group attacks. Ning was often forced to use the Inyang stance in the Silver Cloud world, because the golems would often attack in groups. Whoosh! Yin and Yang spun as Ning's sword light flew. The surrounding area seemed to have been transformed into a black hole which completely blocked all the waters of the wave. Kill! After pushing through the wave, Ning continued to advance. 550. 560. 570. Ning was incredibly tenacious and durable. There was no way for him to use any divine abilities with his Azure Flower Mist energy, but because of how steady he was he was able to stay at maximum power for a very long period of time. Other Daylord equivalents, even ones like Prince Great Joy, 
had to conserve their divine power and thus would often engage in normal combat while only occasionally exploding forth with their full power. Thus, they even brought spirit pills, chaos jewels, and chaos nectar to replenish their depleting energy. Ning, however, was simply too stable. His sword arts were similarly stable. The five stances of Bright Moon included all aspects of swordplay. Some swordsmen were skilled in one area and weaker in other areas, in short, they had their areas of specialties and their deficiencies. Ning, however, was skilled in every single area. He was slightly stronger in defense, but that was just in comparison. The reincarnation sword intent filling his sword arts made it so that all five stances were merged together perfectly. This naturally made him even stabler. Emperor Mirrors now was legendary for his tenacity. Even those who were stronger than him would find it difficult to defeat him. Advance Over the course of countless years, numerous major powers have perished. None of those Dao lords who had failed their Dao merge have been able to come back to life. An enormous price must be paid in order to bring back someone whose true soul has already been extinguished. If I'm not strong enough, I won't be able to beseech the almighty hegemon and experts on his level to help me. I won't be able to convince them that the price will be worth it. If I want to accomplish my goals, I have to seize every opportunity one can. Ning would never give up. He knew that many members of even the Brightshore Imperials had perished over the course of years, with none being brought back to life. Clearly, even if the Almighty Hegemon was capable of resurrecting the dead the price would be so terrifying that he wouldn't be willing to do it lightly. I've just started. I can't give up so soon. Ning sword arts were slowly, subtly improving during this process. He wasn't at a bottleneck, after all, and this sort of furious, high-pressure combat would naturally result in his sword arts being perfected non-stop. Keep going. I can take at least another step forwards. Ning could feel that the pressure was growing greater and greater. Eh? Is he actually? Is that kid from the Sword Palace actually? The ancient powers seated on the thirteen thrones all stared curiously at this scene. Ning was currently battling against six golems, and it was difficult for him to advance. Every single one of the six golems possessed tremendous levels of power, and by now Ning's Dao Lightning and Dao Water were of very little help to him. 600. He actually made it to level 600. His sword arts actually enabled him to make it to level 600? The ancient powers were all shocked. Dao Lord Thousand Waves cried out in surprise, his sword arts are clearly quite ordinary compared to the other acknowledged world-level geniuses, but he actually managed to make it to the 600th level. Ji Ming already ranks in the top 10. As time passed, the total number who made it past level 600 continued to grow. On the very first day, only five had made it past that level. By the time Prince Greatjoy made it past, more than eight had already reached this level. And now, Ji Ning was the tenth. It must be understood that this contest was a contest involving all the world-level geniuses of the Twelve Palaces. For Ning to be only the tenth to make it through this level meant that he was one of the elites within his group. In fact, his performance was better than that of any other member of the Sword Palace. 602. Hmm, um, that should be it. The white-bearded Hegemon nodded slowly. Don't underestimate this Dark North kid. His sword arts might seem to be inferior to that of Great Joy and the others, making him look ordinary, but they are extremely balanced. He's skilled in every single aspect, and from what I understand he has gained the legacy of mirrors now. Look, you can see the sword intent of reincarnation permeating through his sword arts. He's managed to link everything together perfectly, making him very strong, and with those seven types of Dao Lightning and Dao Water supporting him, it makes sense that he can make it past level 600. Still, he's at his limit. He's only persisting out of sheer tenacity and stubbornness. The almighty Hegemon watched the scenes being displayed. Ji Ning had made it to the 602nd level, but he was clearly at a complete disadvantage when facing the eight golems on this level. Still, he continued to stubbornly hang on. To make it to the 602nd level is not, the almighty Hegemon evaluated. Yes, not bad at all. In the future, 
this kid just might be a match for great joy. They all agreed with the hegemon's appraisal. Even Dao Lord Woodflower nodded in agreement, but he couldn't help but sigh to himself. Alas, the seven sword lords of the sword palace had all failed. No one rebutted the almighty hegemon, because they all knew how astute his vision and judgment was. He was able to completely see and understand how strong Ning was right now. If he said that this level was as far as Ning could go, that would definitely be the case. The Silver Cloud World Level 602 of the Altar Tired Ning was so tired. These eight golems launched combined attacks against him. Terrifying flowers of fire and water continuously rained down upon him, and some of the golems repeatedly charged into close combat against him. Every single one was just as strong as Ning, and when the six joined forces they were able to completely suppress Ning. Ning had indeed only been able to just barely hang on for this long thanks to his extremely balanced sword arts. He wouldn't admit defeat lightly. Once he gave up, he would have lost. Only by persevering would there be hope. Ning strove to learn as much as he could from this very battle, pondering on his sword arts flaws in real time as he continuously perfected them. Rumble. Attacks rained down from every direction, and Ning was like a little boat that was being rocked within a stormy sea that would capsize at any moment. Ning had no idea that the almighty hegemon and twelve golden armored powers were watching him. Although they had a rather good opinion of him, they felt certain that this level was Ning's limit. Their attacks really are endless and omnipresent, although Ning's sword arts were slowly improving, he still felt a sense of despair. Defeat would come at any moment. The Desolate Era Chapter 22, A Dao Belonging to Ji Ning Omnipresent? Surrounded and exhausted by the endless attacks from these many golems, the light of inspiration suddenly flickered in Ji Ning's mind. Right. Their attacks are omnipresent. Some cast spells from afar, others close in on me and attack in melee using claws and palms. I only have six arms after using, three heads, six arms, how can I possibly withstand so many attacks? Ning was mumbling to himself as many different sword arts went through his mind, with many insights regarding the Yin Yang stance in particular coming to the forefront. It was as though a thread was linking many small beads together, forming a true collective whole. Omnipresent. The true Yin Yang stance shouldn't result in me defending in such an exhausting manner. So what if I have six arms? Even if I had ten or eighteen arms, so what? There's still a limit to what I can do. Ning was beginning to awaken to the truth. The true Yin Yang stance should allow me to defend against all oncoming attacks, which means it needs to be omnipresent as well. It should envelope everything in its path, and any attacks that come forth should be blocked by it. That means, for the Yin Yang stance to be truly powerful, it should be a domain. I need to transform this stance into a domain. Every single cultivator had a path that was most suited to them. Over the course of countless years, many major powers had chosen many different paths. At their level, there was no way they could imitate others any longer. If they did, it would actually have a negative influence on their own future insights. If you wished to draw a painting, it was best to start with a fresh, blank scroll of paper. The path of cultivation was best expressed through following one's own heart, through slowly understanding and upgrading one's insights to the point of fundamentally transforming them. Let my seven Tao lightnings and my seven Tao waters be my sword, Ning murmured softly. Rumble. The Tao water and Tao lightning that had been in the surrounding area constricting the foes suddenly began to rumble. Although they were elemental lightning and water by nature, true experts of the Tao of the sword could use anything as a sword. Flower petals, water drops, a single water drop, they could all be used as a sword. Now, Ning was using Dao water and Dao lightning as his blade. Dao lightning and Dao water, form my Yin Yang stance and create my Yin Yang sword domain. In recent years, Ning's greatest achievements lay in the field of defense. All of his insights into the Yin Yang stance, including some which he had previously felt to be rather unimportant, all came together in this stance as he generated a domain of sword intent. He infused it with all of his insights, 
causing the power of this stance to instantly transform. Rumble. Every single streak of Dao lightning transformed into a sword. The insides of the swords were made of lightning, but on the outside they had already been shaped and condensed into the form of a sword. The powerful sword intent controlling the lightning was naturally giving birth to sword force. Every single stream of Dao water had also transformed into the shape of a sword. They began to circle around Ning like an enormous whirlpool, but if one looked closely one would see that some of the streaks were swirling clockwise while others were swirling counterclockwise. The mighty sword intent controlling this technique caused parts of it to flow forwards and parts of it to flow backwards, creating an incredibly powerful tearing force. What made white stand out? Only when the rest of a piece of parchment was completely covered in black ink would a spot of blank whiteness in the center be dazzling to behold. Ning's sword intent was strong to begin with. Now that he had formed this technique with forward and reverse flows, the ripping, tearing power of his domain grew exponentially greater. Yin Yang Polarity The concept of Yin and Yang was reinforcing this technique as well. The Yang attribute Dao Lightning and the Yin attribute Dao Water mutually reinforced each other, resulting in both being strengthened. Every so often, compatible streaks of lightning or water would brush against each other, resulting in even more terrifying force. Both forwards and backwards, both gentle and violent. An enormous domain had formed around Ning, covering an area of 10,000 kilometers. This domain was formed of sword-shaped lightning and water, but what made it truly terrifying was the sword intent which Ning's Yin Yang stance had manifested. The sword intent of the Yin Yang stance had already undergone a fundamental transformation. Lightning and water flowed together, sometimes calm and sometimes explosive as it blasted at any foes which dared trespass. From this day forth, my Yin Yang stance shall be the Yin Yang sword domain. Ning smiled. Finally, one of his five stances of Bright Moon had truly transformed. In this moment, Ning clearly understood that the Yin Yang sword domain was a path he would absolutely have to take in the region of defense as he became a Samsara Dao Lord. Careful. Quick. These golems were sentient. Once Ning formed that enormous Yin Yang sword domain, the golems who were fighting within the reach of that domain instantly sensed multiple layers of force appear in the area. Sometimes, the force simply followed their movements, other times, the force exploded against them with great violence. There was even the occasional sensation of being brutally ripped apart by layers of power. The entire domain was filled with countless attacks that alternated between Yin and Yang. The attacks constantly changed and transformed, making it harder and harder for them to defend. The golems had to use roughly 90% of their power in defending against the Yin Yang sword domain. Boom! Ning charged forwards, sweeping out with his sword light and sending a golem flying. The golems were so focused on defending against the domain that they were now extremely vulnerable to Ning. He was able to defeat them all with one strike. Ning continued to advance. 603, 604. 605. Ning slowly advanced, wielding six swords while keeping, three heads, six arms, active. His enormous Yin Yang sword domain covered an area of 10,000 kilometers around him, but in truth its size was variable. He could easily expand it to make it a hundred million kilometers in size, but the 10,000 kilometer range was the range at which he could maintain peak levels of power. Beyond that range, the power of the domain would slowly begin to decay. The Yin Yang sword domain could also be used through flying swords and other magic treasures, or even Dao fire. Anything could be used to generate it. However, Ning had access to incredibly powerful Dao lightning and Dao water, which was why he used them to generate the domain. A simple tree branch controlled by Ning's mighty sword intent was now able to slay a Dao lord of the first step. The Dao lightning and Dao water were extraordinary elemental powers, and when they were used by the Yin Yang sword domain they were able to produce truly enormous amounts of power. The Imperial Palace the Almighty Hegemon and the Twelve Golden Armored Powers were seated on their thirteen thrones, staring at this sight. After Ning's Yin Yang stance transformed into the Yin Yang Sword Domain, Ning was able to easily advance through the upcoming stages. 
However, none of the golden armored powers cared about the fact that the almighty Hegemon's evaluation had been wrong. Instead, they simply watched in astonishment as Ning unleashed his sword intent domain because they knew what this portended. He, has finally taken that first step, the almighty Hegemon said softly. Sword Lord Dark North is guaranteed to become one of the most supreme members of our twelve palaces. Dao Lord Thousand Waves nodded. For someone like him to end up in the Sword Palace instead of mine, what a pity, what a pity. Dao Lord Inwind shook his head. Dao Lord Woodflower glanced sideways at him, then began to laugh in a very contented manner. Although Sword Lord Dark North's sword intent domain is defensive in nature, every part of it is infused with terrifyingly strong attacks. If any enemies enter his domain, they will suffer attacks non-stop. Even the most powerful of foes will eventually be whittled down, making it so that they will be greatly weakened before even drawing close to him. A domain like this is guaranteed to be a terrifying thing to face. If he can become a Dao Lord of the Fourth Step, this sword intent domain is powerful enough to allow him to suppress eternal emperors. A golden armored power whose eyes were like two black vortices of darkness let out a soft sigh. Agreed. The almighty Hegemon nodded. He'll be able to suppress ordinary eternal emperors. For Sword Lord Dark North to take this step forward means that he has already discovered an supreme Dao of defense for himself. It is guaranteed that he will be a monster of a Dao Lord. Everyone present nodded. There were differences in personal Daos. Some Samsara Dao Lords walked a path of simple Daos and would be very weak. As Dao Lords of the first step, they would merely have ordinary levels of power. Emperor Mirrors knows Dao and his seventh stance, the reincarnation stance, would have been enough for him to be acknowledged by the ancient pagodas. He used this path to become a Samsara Dao Lord, and his Dao was fairly formidable. As a Dao Lord of the first step, he could match Dao Lords of the second step. However, a Dao like this just barely cleared the threshold of the ancient pagodas. Prince Greatjoy, Heart Lord Soulwind, Ji Ning, their Daos were on a higher level. Ning had just created his Yin-Yang sword domain, but it was a level of power above the reincarnation stance and much more profound. And Supreme Dao of Defense. Dao Lord Thousand Waves let out a sigh. The Sword Palace really hasn't had many individuals who have ever been able to come up with an Supreme Dao. Absolutely true. Lord Woodflower nodded. Every single major power would have an individual Dao that was best suited to them. Ning was able to develop his Yin-Yang sword domain, but others might come up with similarly strong sword arts. So long as they were at the same general level, they would all be classified as an ultimate class defensive Dao. If he follows this Dao to its conclusion, he definitely will be able to trample over eternal emperors once he becomes a Dao Lord of the fourth step. Dao Lord Thousand Waves laughed. He's still a bit lacking compared to Palace Lord Dawnstar, Dao Lord Inwin said. Lord Dawnstar, at the world level, developed three supreme Daos and then merged them together perfectly. After he became a Dao Lord of the Fourth Step, he was able to slay an Eternal Emperor with just three strokes of his blade. Although Sword Lord Dark North is impressive, he will only be able to suppress Eternal Emperors. Killing them will be a matter of luck. True. Everyone present agreed. But Birchalu and East Cult do have a chance of reaching Lord Dawnstar's level. The almighty Hegemon agreed with this assessment as well. Still, given that Dark North has come up with an ultimate class defensive Dao, he'll still be able to withstand them in an actual battle. He should be classified as someone on the same level as them. East Cult had come up with supreme Daos for both offense and defense, and had been able to merge them perfectly. This was why he was a match for Birchalu. True. Him having taken this step means he is guaranteed to be a monster of a Dao Lord. Lord Woodflower was in a splendid mood. Previously, these golden armored figures had all referred to Ji Ning as, this kid. Now that Ning had taken this step, they all referred to him as, Dark North or, Sword Lord Dark North, because in their hearts they viewed Ning as someone who would be a true equal. However, Supreme Daos are also the most difficult Daos for gaining eternity. The almighty Hegemon let out a soft sigh. They are indeed hard, 
but to choose this path means he will definitely be an extraordinary figure, Dao Lord Thousand Waves said. Dao Lord All God, Dao Lord Feather Dress, Palace Lord Dawn Star, they had all chosen the path of an ultimate class Dao. As a result, becoming an eternal emperor would be incredibly difficult. Still, while they were alive, they were amongst the most illustrious, distinguished figures of all the endless territories. The almighty Hegemon and the others were sighing in amazement over Ning's prowess, but they had no idea that this was merely the evolution of the Yin Yang stance, one of five stances in Ning's, Bright Moon, Sword Art. Ning's plan was to reach the apex with his other four stances as well. He was going to find suitable Daos for his other four stances, then infuse all of their mysteries into his own sword arts. This was Ning's true goal. Right now, he had developed an supreme Dao of defense, the Inyang Sword Domain, but this was just the beginning. 660 670 680 Dao Lord Woodflower watched as Ning continuously advanced up the steps of the altar, and the smile on his face continued to widen. The Desolate Era Chapter 23, The Dust Settles As Dao Lord Yin Wind watched Ji Ning advanced past level 680, he couldn't help but feel resigned. Even the best performing member of his Saber Palace, Saber Lord Redsnow, had only made it to level 680. For Heart Lord Soul Wind to give such an impressive performance was expected, but Great Joy's improvements were truly shocking. He was even better than Soul Wind. And now, this Dark North fellow has appeared as well. Ning continued to advance past multiple floors. Kill. Boom. The attacks of the ancient golems were strong enough to sunder heaven and earth, and they came at Ning from all directions. As Ning walked forwards, his Yin Yang sword domain formed a region of wild, dark chaos around him. One could vaguely see the flickering of lightning and water within this region, and the region itself stretched out to be more than 10,000 kilometers wide. All enemies who sought to move close to Ning had to be able to first withstand the assaults of the Yin Yang sword domain. Break. Go. Ning's swords were sometimes ephemeral and unpredictable, sometimes as heavy and weighty as a mountain. However, the speed at which he walked began to slow down. Clearly, the pressure was starting to increase. 690. 695. 696, Dao Lord Woodflower had a look of delight on his face. He broke through level 700. Ning continued to advance, albeit with great difficulty as he began to move slower and slower. Even though the Yin Yang Sword Domain was helping him out, he was finding it harder and harder to deal with the increasingly powerful golems. Boom! Ning sword arts were finally breached on level 705. Although they came out in a perfect, flawless cycle, they still crumbled when faced with the overwhelming power that had been brought to bear upon them. Outside the Dao Lord Cloud World. A white-robed, rather bedraggled-looking Ning suddenly appeared, a look of worry in his eyes. I wonder if I made it into the top four. However, I have to say that my performance was better than I expected. I actually ended up developing a defensive Dao. Ning felt both content and worried. His sword arts had reached an extremely high level, but his opponents were the greatest world-level geniuses of the Twelve Palaces. He couldn't help but think back to that time when he had sparred against Birchalu. Only now did realize what a truly profound level Birchalu had reached. This was because Birchalu was at a level of insight that was most likely one level higher than the current Ji Ning's. Only when Ning himself improved did he truly understand how great the distance had been between the two of them. Back when he had been at the Astral Islands, Ning only had the vague sense that the man had a higher level of understanding than he did. As to how much higher, exactly? He couldn't say for sure. Birchalu hadn't even used his true form, after all, he had merely used his human form to spar against Ning. However, now, even if Birchalu was to attack me with all his power, I would not need to be afraid of him, Ning mused. His Yin Yang sword domain was an extremely defensive skill. Even if Ning faced opponents who were stronger than him, he would still be able to defend against them. Dark North. Suddenly, a voice rang out within Ning's mind. Eh. 
Ning turned to look towards the direction of Lord Woodflower's estate. Come here immediately, Lord Woodflower sent. Yes. Ning immediately transformed into a streak of light and flew towards the estate. Soon, he reached Lord Woodflower's estate, and Lord Woodflower himself was standing at the entrance, a smile on his face as he looked at Ning. Come in, Dark North. What is it, senior apprentice brother? Ning was a bit nervous. He didn't know if he had made it into the top four or not. Damned impressive. The almighty Hegemon and the others all saw you use that sword intent domain of yours. Lord Woodflower was in such a delightful mood that he was positively beaming. For his sword palace to completely crush the Saber Palace in such a way was absolutely wonderful. The two palaces had been at loggerheads and competing against each other since time immemorial. That was something I just came up with it. I call it the Inyang Sword Domain. Ning laughed. I was just lucky. I had already prepared seven types of Dao Lightning and Dao Water, and I was able to use them to create my Inyang Sword Domain. If I had been using any other types of treasures, the power of my domain would have been much weaker. The Dao Lightning and the Dao Water aren't that impressive. It is your sword intent which truly impresses. Lord Woodflower couldn't help but praise Ning. Ning chuckled. Even if he merely used a single, ordinary flying sword, his Inyang sword domain would still cause it to naturally emanate an aura of sword force. The power of the domain would still have 20 to 30 percent of the power of a domain formed through using Dao Lightning and Dao Water. At this level, even if he merely used his immortal energy to manifest a sword and sword force, he would still be able to create an extremely powerful domain with it. Without the Dao Water and the Dao Lightning, I probably wouldn't have been able to make it much farther past level 690, Ning said. He couldn't help but ask, Senior Apprentice Brother, do I have a shot at the top four? Only the top four would be granted the opportunity. You do. Lord Woodflower nodded. A very good shot, in fact. But of course, the three days haven't ended and there are still world-level cultivators challenging the Dao Lord Cloud World. Nothing is certain until the final cultivator concludes his attempts. Oh. Ning nodded. Then how is my ranking? Right now, you are ranked second, Lord Woodflower said. Prince Greatjoy is ranked first, and he made it to floor 719. Heart Lord Soulwind is ranked third, and he made it to floor 692. Fourth is Saber Lord Reds now, who stopped on floor 680. Reds now? Ning stared. Something wrong? Lord Woodflower asked. Nothing, nothing. Ning immediately shook his head. I just thought of an old friend, that's all. Daoist Threelive's most powerful general had been Reds now. Reds now had eventually chosen to follow Ning as well, then had become apprentice to Sub Hoodie as well. He shared the exact same Daoist title as this Saber Lord Reds now. Still, it was quite common to encounter cultivators with the same or similar nicknames. There were countless people in every chaos world who shared the same name, and for a few of the more powerful cultivators to also share the same Daoist title wasn't that surprising. Wasn't the Saber Palace bragging a lot about how well they would do? Ning asked. Aha, their boasting skills were quite profound, yes. Lord Woodflower let out a laugh, but then he couldn't help but sigh as well. To be honest, they were qualified to boast. The fourth, fifth, and sixth ranked experts all belonged to the Saber Palace. We all knew that Heartlord Soulwind would be formidable, but you and Prince Greatjoy caught everyone off guard. Prince Greatjoy? Ning listened attentively. He was quite curious about this man who had made it even farther within the Silver Cloud world than he himself had. He's also been improving quite rapidly. He actually managed to come up. With two Supreme Das. Lord Woodflower let out a sigh. If he can link his two Supreme Das, he'll probably be on par with East Cult and Birchalu. Ning nodded. It was necessary to fuse Supreme Das together in some manner. For example, the five stances of Ning's, Bright Moon, Sword Art were all linked together thanks to his reincarnation sword intent. If you weren't able to perfectly join your sword arts together, 
you would have flaws when you fought in battle. True experts had to have powerful defenses. Only then would they be able to survive for a long time. But of course, their attacks had to be strong as well, only then would they be able to slay foes. If Ning's attacks had been just a bit stronger, he would have been able to advance quite a bit further up the altar within the Silver Cloud world. Ah! A look of shock suddenly appeared on Lord Woodflower's face. What's wrong? Ning looked at Lord Woodflower. I'll tell you in a moment. Lord Woodflower didn't explain in detail. Clearly, his incarnation was watching something happen within the Imperial Palace. Ning was incredibly curious as to what Lord Woodflower was watching, but he had no choice but to tamp down his curiosity. A long while later, Lord Woodflower suddenly began to laugh. Ah ha ha. Pride really does cometh before a fall. Senior apprentice brother? Ning was puzzled. A world-level cultivator belonging to the Palace of Kind Water, a fellow named Waterlord Fire Surge, actually made it all the way to level 687, Lord Woodflower said. In other words, even farther than Saber Lord Reds now? Ning stared. Right. The Saber Palace didn't get a single slot in the top four. Lord Woodflower roared with laughter. Oh, this is just wonderful. When I saw that ugly look on Yinwen's ugly face, oh, that was simply delightful. Ha! Huh. That fellow usually loves to strut about and put on airs in front of me. Ning felt amazed as well. In the end, the most famous Saber Palace had actually been completely defeated. Then again, the geniuses of the Twelve Palaces couldn't be evaluated using common measures. Great Joy, Dark North, and Fire Surge, these three had only displayed their true brilliance during this competition. He's a member of the Kindwater Palace. Why is his Daoist title, Fire Surge? Ning was puzzled. He's another person who started off as a mortal cultivator. I heard that he originally was primarily a cultivator in the Tao of Fire. However, due to some trouble he apparently ran into within the sect he was in as a mortal, he ended up choosing the Tao of Water instead. However, by then his Daoist title had already been chosen, and so he simply continued to use it, Lord Woodflower explained. The Twelve Palaces didn't have that many world-level cultivators, and so he obviously was familiar with the vast majority of them. Ning nodded. Some cultivators would change their Daoist titles once they reached a certain level of power. Ning was another example of a person who had chosen his Daoist title, Dark North, a long time ago. He had never changed it. Let's wait for just another moment. There is one final world-level cultivator attempting the trials, Lord Woodflower said. A short while later. All right, all done. The results are in. Prince Greatjoy, yourself, Heart Lord Soulwind, and Water Lord Fire Surge will be the ones to partake in this opportunity, Lord Woodflower said. And what opportunity is this, exactly? Although Ning felt quite excited, he also felt quite curious as to what this was all about. All he knew was that this was an incredible opportunity, one which no one seemed to know much about. Don't ask. When you meet the Almighty Hegemon, you'll know, Lord Woodflower said. Meet the Almighty Hegemon? Ning was stunned. Right. The Almighty Hegemon has already issued a summons to the four of you. Hurry over to the place where the Imperials reside, Lord Woodflower said. The Desolate Era. Chapter 24, The First Meeting. The Twelve Palaces were tightly connected to the Brightshore Imperials, and so there were space-time transfer arrays linking the palaces to the territory of the Imperials. Rumble. Space-time twisted around Ji Ning. Once everything went still, he swept the area with his gaze. So this is the Imperial Palace? Although all twelve of the palaces of the Brightshore Kingdom were extremely large and covered with many formations, the true center of the kingdom remained the Imperial Palace. Before Ning was an utterly, breathtakingly large palace that was as white as snow, with gold, black, and blue accents covering parts of it. Just looking at the Imperial Palace, Ning sensed an aura of incredible presence and might. He felt as though he was looking up at the stars themselves. I heard that the Imperials generally live here in the Imperial Palace. 
I wonder how many defenses the almighty Hegemon had placed around his headquarters, Ning mused. Ning emerged from the array and began to walk towards the palace gates of the enormous imperial palace. There were no people before the palace at all, just two grey statues. One was of a humanoid wielding a spear, the second was of a dragon-like creature that was coiled around itself. Halt! The humanoid statue suddenly spoke. Out in a grating voice as it stared at Ning. What? Ning was badly startled. It's alive? He could now be considered a powerful expert. After unleashing his Yin-Yang sword domain, he was a match for most Dao Lords of the Second Step, and thus he had extremely keen senses towards life and the aura of life. He would be able to easily detect the aura of a tiny mosquito from a million kilometers away. However, his senses were clearly telling him that this statue before him was nothing more than an ordinary statue, an inert hunk of rock. How, then, was it speaking? Have you come to see the hegemon? The grey humanoid statue was almost as tall as the palace gates, and it stared down at Ning. Yes. Ning nodded. Although his senses were still telling him that this statue was an inert hunk of rock, he couldn't help but feel an inexplicable hint of fear. Enter after all four have arrived, the grey humanoid statue said coldly. Ning had no choice but to stand there and wait quietly. After enough time passed to brew a kettle of tea, the nearby space-time transfer array once more lit up. Once the light subsided, a skinny bald youth dressed in loose red robes had appeared within it. The youth's face was covered with strange divine red tattoos that seemed to extrude an aura of special charm. Ning only had to glance at them to feel that they were exerting an effect upon him. I am Soul Wind. The bald, red-robed youth strolled forwards, then smiled. Greetings, Sword Lord Dark North. Heart Lord Soul Wind. Ning greeted the man. The Heart Force Palace had very few cultivators, and the only world-level cultivator acknowledged by the ancient pagodas was Heart Lord Soul Wind. Ning had heard of this man long ago. This was no dabbler like Birchalu, this was a man who had truly poured all of his effort into being a Heart Force cultivator, and his abilities were truly unfathomable. Sword Lord Dark North, you actually made it farther into the Silver Cloud World's Great Altar than I did. Heart Lord Soul Wind smiled in a gentle, warm fashion. I heard that you were abducted by the Almighty Hegemon to our Brightshore Kingdom roughly 2000 years ago. For you to reach such a level of power in such a short period of time. Soul Wind truly admires you. Ning was instantly speechless. The man even knew about him having been abducted by the Almighty Hegemon 2000 years ago. News had certainly spread quite fast. No need to feel surprised, Sword Lord Dark North. It was one of my elder brothers in the Heart Force Palace who informed me of this, Heart Lord Soul Wind said with a laugh. The Heart Force Palace has very few cultivators within it, and we all treat each other as we would our actual siblings. We hold nothing back from each other. Ning suddenly remembered that the entire Heart Force Palace held less than ten Samsara Dao Lords. Most of those Samsara Dao Lords were out wandering the primordial chaos, leaving no more than two or three who actually resided within the palace itself. Compared to the other eleven palaces, the Heart Force Palace really did have pitifully few members. Ning could fully understand how this would result in them treating each other as they would actual siblings. Sword Lord Dark North, if you wish you can simply address me as Soul Wind. Heart Lord Soul Wind smiled. Then you can address me as Dark North, Brother Soul Wind, Ning said. In his heart, he couldn't help but feel astonished. Why was it that a simple smile from Soul Wind caused Ning to have such a good impression of him? His voice alone was enough to make it impossible for others to hate him. Rumble. The space-time transfer array once more lit up, and moments later a youth dressed in deep blue robes emerged. He had a cold, forbidding face, and he emanated an aura of baleful energy. As soon as he emerged he saw Ning and Soul Wind, and he immediately called out, Greetings, Heart Lord Soul Wind and Sword Lord Dark North. Are you Water Lord Fire Surge? No need to stand on such ceremony. You can simply address us as Soul Wind and Dark North, Heart Lord Soul Wind said, and Ning nodded. I was lucky enough to be ranked number four, 
but I fear I'll need your help in the future. Although the blue-robed youth had a cold and foreboding aura, his words were quite courteous and respectful. Both Soulwind and Ning felt quite kindly disposed towards him. No matter what, they were all members of the Twelve Palaces who had sworn lifeblood oaths not to attack each other. Given that they were ranked in the top four, all of them would clearly be extraordinary figures in the future. So long as they were able to survive, they would all become major powers who would shock the rest of the primordial chaos. It was natural for them to wish to befriend each other. The three chatted idly for a time, slowly growing more familiar with each other's personalities and traits. Finally, the last member arrived. This was a man dressed in black imperial robes who wore a royal crown. His skin was as clear as jade, and his eyes were as deep as the abyss between the stars. Even the likes of Ji Ning, Fire Surge, and Soul Wind couldn't help but mentally sigh in amazement. In terms of appearance and aura, at least, this Prince Great Joy was definitely number one amongst the four. So the three of you have already arrived? Please pardon me for having arrived late. Great Joy feels quite ashamed at having made you wait. Prince Great Joy was as courteous as the story said he was, but of course the stories also said that deep down, he was actually quite a berserk fellow. We just arrived a short while ago. Brother Great Joy, you ranked number one in this trial. I imagine that you are probably on par with Birchalu and East Cult. The four began to casually chat amongst themselves. Although they were all quite relaxed, none of them dared to underestimate any of the other three, as they were all quite close in power. They belonged to the same general level of strength, even though there were differences with regards to how far they had made it in the Silver Cloud world. If they were to get into an actual fight, it was hard to say who would win. In addition, the trial of the Silver Cloud world was a trial where many sources of outside help were banned, such as Dao Seals or Golems. Given how extraordinary they all were, all of them had clearly experienced tremendous strokes of karmic luck in the past. The hegemon has summoned the four of you. Go on inside. The giant humanoid statue stared down at the four tiny dots below it as it spoke in a cold voice. The two statues standing in front of the Imperial Palace are the two great guardians of the Imperial Palace, Heartlord Soulwind sent mentally. I heard that long ago, during the era when the almighty Hegemon was first establishing his reputation, he led these two great guardians into battle and slew countless major powers with them. Oh! Ning, Great Joy, and Fire Surge both listened attentively. The members of the Heart Force Palace shared a particularly close relationship with each other, and so Heart Lord Soul Wind knew many more secrets than most members of the other palaces. Although Ning was quite intrigued about the history of these two giant statues, he didn't pay them too much mind as he entered the Imperial Palace. Once they stepped past the gates and saw the towering palace, the four of them could sense space-time twisting around them as they were teleported away once more. They had been brought to a region filled with empty space with a few chaos stars sprinkled throughout it. Ning and the others all stared at their surroundings as they appeared in this place. What is this place? All four of them were rather puzzled. This region was simply too silent, as still as a pool of water. The primordial chaos should generally be filled with many types of void storms and chaos waves, and it would generally be filled with boundless amounts of chaos energy. However, the empty region they were in was utterly enormous and completely devoid of primordial chaos. Whoosh! The void before them suddenly parted like a curtain of water as an incomparably massive behemoth suddenly appeared. This behemoth had two enormous eyes that were like blazing stars, but it gazed towards Ning and the other three in a very gentle manner. When it spoke, its voice was similarly gentle, but it echoed throughout every single inch of this region. Greetings, my four young fellows. Great joy, soul wind, Fire Surge, and Ning were all shocked. Ning couldn't help but think back to the scene of him and the other world-level cultivators being swallowed up by the head of an enormous behemoth, then being teleported to the Brightshore Kingdom. Greetings, Hegemon. Ning and the other three all bowed respectfully. There was no need to kneel or kowtow, the Hegemon generally treated the members of the Twelve Palaces quite well. You four young fellows have earned a rare opportunity for yourselves, the towering behemoth said. 
you shall head out alongside a member of my Imperials known as Skyfire Brightshore, and then you shall enter the Arceus region of an alternate universe. This region is one of the most legendary locations of this alternate universe, and it is filled with many dangers. It is also, however, filled with many opportunities. I've chosen the four of you because I hope that you will help my young clansman, Skyfire Brightshore, as much as you can and give him a better chance at surviving. But of course, I will reward you heavily for the services you have rendered to myself and Skyfire. The Desolate Era Chapter 25 Following Master Ji Ming and the others were all intrigued. In truth, they had all suspected long ago that the reason why the Almighty Hegemon had chosen the four of them from the Twelve Palaces was to have them assist Skyfire Brightshore. However, the reason why the Twelve Palaces had been on such good terms with the Brightshore Imperials for so long was precisely because they treated each other as equals. Ning and the others were all extraordinary figures, and they wouldn't be expected to risk their lives for the Imperials without being compensated at all. Once you return from the alternate universe, I'll speak with Skyfire Brightshore. The more assistance you provided to him, the greater our gratitude shall be, the towering behemoth said. Do not worry, Hegemon. We will definitely do everything we can. Since we are traveling together, we shall definitely do our best to support each other. All of them spoke out in unison. They all knew that since the Hegemon said he would reward them heavily, the Rewards for this mission would definitely be extraordinary. The Hegemon was someone who had stood at the very top of the endless territories for countless years, after all. He had existed for even longer than the Brightshore Kingdom itself had existed. A heavy reward from someone like him was indeed more than enough to convince Ning and the others to do their absolute utmost in protecting Skyfire Brightshore in his journey to the alternate universe. Good. The towering behemoth nodded slightly. Rumble. Yet another space-time vortex appeared next to Ning's group. Moments later, a strange beast bathed in blazing flames suddenly emerged. Skyfire. The towering behemoth nodded. Hegemon. The blazing beast immediately transformed into the shape of a fiery-haired youth who wore a suit of azure armor. It shall be the five of you who will travel to the alternate universe, the towering behemoth said. The fiery-haired youth swept the four with his gaze, closely scrutinizing them. He then cracked a smile. My name is Skyfire Brightshore, but you can just call me Skyfire. I heard from the Hegemon that none of the four chosen ones are weaker than I am. Once we go to the alternate universe, I'll have to trouble you to help me out. Although Skyfire Brightshore was an incredibly talented member of the race of Brightshore Imperials, he was still just a new member who had been brought back just a short while ago. Ning and the others had all developed at least one supreme Dao and were comparable to Dao Lords of the Second Step. Indeed, all of them were somewhat more powerful than Skyfire Brightshore. But of course, this was only true if they factored in their normal combat power. There was no way to calculate the power of any trump cards or single-use items which they were keeping hidden up their sleeves. Hegemon, where is this Arceus region and what is this alternate universe? Prince Greatjoy asked. He was nothing more than an honorary disciple of the almighty Hegemon, and he wasn't truly qualified to address the Hegemon as a master. According to the almighty Hegemon's rules, only his personal disciples were qualified to call him master. The alternate universe? The towering behemoth smiled as it saw the looks of eagerness appear on the faces of Ning and the others. By now, all of you should have sensed that the endless territories have certain prime essences within it. There is a prime essence of fire, a prime essence of water, a prime essence of the sword, a prime essence of space, a prime essence of time. Ning and the others nodded. Everyone could sense the prime essences. However, attuning to the prime essences was only able to help one advance to the level of full mastery as a world-level cultivator. As for the more profound mysteries, the prime essences kept them bottled up internally and emanated none of them at all. Supposedly, not even eternal emperors could enter the prime essences and train in those mysteries. Thus, Samsara Dao lords had to find and develop a Dao which suited themselves, one slow step at a time. The vast region which is covered by the power of the prime essences is known as a universe, the almighty Hegemon said. 
An alternate universe naturally refers to a place which has completely different prime essences. What? Ning and the others were all stunned. Different prime essences? The Three Realms, the Badlands Territory, the Bright Shore Kingdom. Ning had been able to sense the prime essence of the sword in all these places. The prime essence of the sword was unchanging, and the vast endless territories were nothing more than a part of an enormous universe. But now, it seemed as though he was going to head off into a completely different universe? Do not worry. The outermost layers of the prime essences of this alternate universe, such as the prime essence of water, the prime essence of time, the prime essence of the sword, etc., are all the same as ours. Only the inner layers differ, the almighty Hegemon said. Thus, your power shall not be impacted whatsoever. Has anyone ever been to this place? Waterlord Fire Surge couldn't help but ask. None. The almighty Hegemon shook his head. Ning and the others were instantly rendered speechless. Long ago, as I attuned myself to the nature of space-time, I was able to dimly sense the traces of an alternate universe that was quite close to our own universe, and so I opened a transversal conduit between our two universe, the towering behemoth said. However, the transversal conduit is rather weak, because it is constantly being disrupted by the differing laws of our two universes. Thus, only those below the Tao Lord level of power are able to enter it. Thus, once you head off into this alternate universe, you absolutely must not allow yourselves to break through to the Tao Lord level. If you do break through, you will never be able to return. You will have to forever stay within that alternate universe, the towering behemoth instructed. Ning and the others nodded. So due to the different laws of the two universes, there was no way for Tao Lords to pass through this transversal conduit. However, world-level cultivators can pass through this conduit with no danger whatsoever, the towering behemoth said. Just a few days ago, I sent one of my world-level servants through the dimension conduit to do some exploring, then brought him back safely. Over the course of countless years, I've also managed to capture quite a few world-level cultivators of the alternate universe and bring them to ours. Capture? Ning and the others were secretly speechless. The almighty Hegemon was unable to go personally, but was still able to capture people? Thus, this transversal conduit is completely safe, the towering behemoth said. Given how strong you are, I trust that you will not encounter much danger when you journey through the territories of the alternate universe. The true trial will begin once you reach their Archaeus region. Ning and the other four listened attentively. Not even Skyfire Brightshore knew much about this Archaeus region. The Archaeus region is the most mysterious region in this alternate universe. It takes up an extremely vast region of space, so vast that I imagine there are very few cultivators who even know how large it truly is. Supposedly, there are many Tao Lords and even Eternal Emperors who seclude themselves throughout the Archaeus region. The towering behemoth laughed. This Archaeus region is so vast that it is most likely as large as our entire endless territories. What? Ning and the others were all speechless. They had originally thought that this Archaeus region would be some sort of secret world or location. Now, it seemed, it was a place that was almost as vast as their entire endless territories. That place is the core of that entire alternate universe, the place where the alternate universe sprang from. Countless cultivators in that universe dream of entering the Archaeus region, because everyone who manages to survive their journey through it will return completely transformed, the towering behemoth said. However, if you barge into the Archaeus region, you will immediately be assaulted and annihilated by the full force of the entire Archaeus region itself. You'll be instantly reduced to dust and your true soul vaporized. Ning and the others were truly at a loss for words. If the entire region was the size of the endless territories, how terrifying would an attack launched with the full might of that region be? That place is the core of the entire alternate universe, after all. The towering behemoth continued, everyone who wishes to enter the place has to first bind an Archaeus medallion. After doing so, you'll be able to enter it safely and won't be expelled by the power of the region. Archaeus medallions are extremely rare. I sent my will into the alternate universe and spread it across an extremely wide area, then kidnapped the world-level cultivators who passed through the area. 
It took me countless years to accumulate just a few Arceus medallions, the towering behemoth said. Here are the five Arceus medallions. Take them and bind them. Swoosh. 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 Five streaks of light appeared out of nowhere and flew towards Ning and the other four. The Arceus medallions were dark red disc-shaped medallions that were covered with ancient, complicated runes. Ning and the others didn't understand the runes, but could sense that they came from a long time ago, in a universe that was far, far away. They all bound the medallions. Hegemon. Ning spoke out. Will we be permitted to bring our retainers and servants into the alternate universe? Are they allowed to enter the Arceus region? The others all looked at the Hegemon, because they all had retainers and servants as well. Anyone below the Dao Lord level can make use of the transversal conduit, the almighty Hegemon said. As for the Arceus region, they will have to perpetually hide within your estate world treasures, and they can't let any of their auras leak out at all. If they reveal themselves within the Arceus region, they'll suffer an immediate attack from the power of the region. However, if they continuously hide without coming out they will be safe. Ning and the others now understood. They would not be able to leave the estate worlds or even send out their aura or god sense. If that was the case, there was no real point to bringing them. But of course, if you were able to acquire more Arceus medallions, you could gift them to your retainers and servants. They would then be qualified to enter the Arceus region as well, the almighty Hegemon suddenly said. Still, I urge you to be more low-key when you enter the Arceus region, as it holds quite a few truly powerful Dao Lords. Here is a star map of the alternate universe. It includes all the markers you need to travel from the transversal conduit's exit to the Arceus region, as well as some information regarding this universe. Remember, you are not to reveal this to others. As the almighty Hegemon spoke, he bestowed five sets of star maps upon them. Understood. Ning and the other four accepted the maps. Make your preparations. Three days from now, we shall meet again outside the Imperial Palace, the Almighty Hegemon instructed. Ning returned to the Sword Palace, then met with World God Pil Saint and Su Yuji. A tremendous opportunity has been made available to me. I'll be heading to an extremely dangerous place. If you follow me, there's a slim chance that you'll gain some karmic fortune from it as well. But of course, when I die you will die as well, Ning said. Shall you follow me or will you remain here in the Sword Palace? I'll follow you, Master. Su Yuji didn't hesitate at all. I'm not allowed to learn any of the techniques or secret arts of the Twelve Palaces. Of course I'll follow you, Master. Pil Saint agreed. Ning nodded slowly upon seeing this. He couldn't promise them anything. He hadn't even visited this alternate universe before, after all. Three days later, Ji Ning, Soul Wind, Fire Surge, Great Joy, and Skyfire Bright Joy all gathered together before the gates of the Imperial Palace. Everyone. The gray humanoid statue suddenly walked towards Ning and the other four. I shall escort the five of you to the transversal conduit. This is a seven English podcast and you're listening to an adventure fantasy novel. The Desolate Era. Book 27, 12 Palaces. Chapter 26, Entering the Alternate Universe. The grayish humanoid statue first made some slight alterations to the space-time transfer array in front of the Imperial Palace, then activated it. Ji Ning, Soul Wind, Fire Surge, Great Joy, and Skyfire could sense space-time twisting around them. Soon, everything went silent. Eh. Ning and the others stared at their new surroundings. They were at the peak of a towering mountain that was levitating in empty space. At the very apex of the mountain peak sat a white-bearded old man dressed in snowy robes who had six curved horns on his head. Ning and the others had seen the almighty Hegemon's true form before, and they immediately recognized the old man's aura as that of the Hegemon's. They immediately bowed respectfully. Hegemon. This place here is the transversal conduit. The white-bearded old man pointed at a place halfway up the mountain. At first glance it seemed quite ordinary, but a more careful examination revealed a series of faint, 
concentric spacetime ripples emanating an aura of incredible power. If the transversal conduit was to collapse with them inside, they would probably all perish. Once you enter the alternate universe, even items like true soul towers and heart lamps will no longer be able to detect whether or not you are still alive, to say nothing of ordinary life tablets, the white-bearded elder said. These are two completely separate universes, after all. But of course, if you have trained in some sort of cloning technique, you can leave a clone behind in this universe. If the other clones all perish, you can rebuild them with your backup clone. That's one way to tell if you are alive or not. All right. Ning and the others all nodded. Heart lamps and true soul towers were attuned directly to one's true soul. Even if one entered the most deadly of locations, they would still be able to sense the presence of your true soul. Alas, if you entered an alternate universe they would be useless. Life tablets were the most simple and common items used to determine if someone was alive or not. Many special locations were able to completely block the effect of life tablets. In fact, a sufficiently great distance would also be enough to make it impossible for a life tablet to function. No one will be able to assist you on this journey to this alternate universe. Everything will all be up to yourselves, the white-bearded elder said. Go in. After you enter the conduit, make sure you remember to only go forwards and follow the flow. Understood, Ning and the other four acknowledged. They then all turned to walk towards those the seemingly ordinary, concentric space-time ripples. As the five moved closer to the ripples, they quickly began to feel as though they had been dragged into a powerful space-time whirlpool. The journey through the transversal conduit started off quite calm and peaceful. Soon, however, Ning and the others could sense how space and time were twisting and distorting around them, as were many of the laws they had taken for granted. This was quite a miserable feeling, even their true souls felt stifled and choked. Let's move faster, Prince Greatjoy growled. Forwards. Ning urged. They all suppressed the nauseous feelings they had as they hurriedly flew forwards. In front of them was a dark tunnel which had been formed by rings of space-time vortices. The black tunnel seemingly had no exit, and the laws of both universes were in force throughout the tunnel. Thankfully, Ning and the others had not yet reached the Dao Lord level, and so the disturbance they created was fairly minor. If a true Dao Lord had dared to make use of this transversal conduit, it was very likely that the two differing laws of the two universes would have crushed him to death. Whoosh! Ning and the others continued to fly forwards at high speed. Why is this tunnel so long? How long is this transversal conduit? There seems to be no end to it. Ning and the others had been flying for more than two hours by now, but they were still stuck within that tunnel of darkness. They all felt quite nauseous, but at least they weren't at risk of losing their lives. They were all able to resist the uncomfortable feelings. Heart Lord Soulwind sent mentally to the others. The Hegemon told us to just keep pressing onwards after we enter the tunnel. Let's just keep flying like this. Sooner or later, we'll reach the exit. Right. Water Lord Fire Surge nodded as well. A transversal conduit which links two universes. Today, I've finally seen such a thing with my own eyes. Prince Greatjoy laughed loudly. The five of them chatted as they continued to fly forwards, but they soon ran out of topics to talk about and so just continued to fly in silence. One day. Two days. Three days. Ning had never imagined that this transversal conduit would be so long. If this was normal flying, he wouldn't have minded, but this was a place where the laws of two universes were clashing against each other. Every second here felt like an entire miserable year. Why hadn't the almighty Hegemon warned them about this? Most likely, he wanted to use it to temper their hearts and wills. In the blink of an eye, three full years went by. Wait, what's that? Is that the exit? I think that's the exit. Ning and the others had been flying silently when suddenly, they all revealed looks of great joy. They saw some light sparkling up ahead, breaking up the monotonous darkness of the transversal conduit. It didn't seem as though there was anything past those sparkles of light. It seemed as though they had reached the end. Keep flying. 
They had no other options but to fly straight towards the light. Whoosh. 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 The five of them all flew out of the darkness. What is this place? The five of them found themselves within a region of drifting primordial chaos. In front of them was an enormous chaos star that blazed like a giant ball of fire. Due to its close proximity the surrounding area was illuminated quite brightly by this chaos star. Ning and the others turned to look behind them, only to see an enormous spatial vortex. I imagine there aren't many who would dare to enter this spatial vortex, Heartlord Soulwind laughed. Ning nodded. He himself had arrived in the Badlands territory by leaving the Three Realms through a spatial vortex. There were quite a few such vortices in the Endless Territories, but because most were naturally formed they often contained unknown dangers. Generally speaking, cultivators wouldn't dare to risk their lives within one of them. But of course, there were always those like Old Man Yuan or Godfiend Withers Pike who would enter the vortices because they were being chased and had nowhere else to flee. They had no choice but to flee into the most dangerous of places. Even if they made it through and were lucky enough to survive, on the other side is the Hegemon himself. Prince Greyjoy sent a mental chuckle as well. Can you sense it, everyone? Skyfire Brightshore's eyes were closed as he sent out his senses. It is true. Many of the prime essences in this place are different from ours. Ning was attuning himself to the local prime essences as well. This place was similar to the Endless Territories in that both had a prime essence of the sword, a prince essence of fire, a prime essence of water, a prime essence of lightning, a prime essence of space, and many other types of prime essence. These prime essences were like giant stone pillars that were holding up the entire universe they were in, and the outermost ripples of these prime essences could be sensed and attuned to by cultivators. In this respect, things were exactly the same as they were in the Endless Territories. Thus, cultivation was a similar process as well. However, inside, the prime essences things were very different. In the endless territories, the prime essence of the sword is more all-encompassing and massive. In this alternate universe, the prime essence of the sword seems to be more reserved but also more savage, Ning mused. The five of them were all curiously attuning themselves to the local prime essences. According to our star maps, our current location is quite a long ways off from the Arceus region. Let us head off, gentlemen, Waterlord Fire Surge said. Yes, time to head off. Our journey is a long one. Our most important mission right now is to reach the Arceus region safely. Let's go. Although the five were all very confident, and although their chances of reaching the Arceus region were quite high, they didn't dare to be reckless. The distance between their location and the Arceus region truly was quite great, as the Arceus region was the core of this entire alternate universe and was truly, indescribably vast. According to their star maps, it would take Ning's group at least 1,500 years to go from the transversal conduit to the Arceus region. They would have go to through more than 3,000 territories. World-level cultivators would almost never be willing to take on a journey of such distances, as it would be simply far too dangerous. Who knew when they would perish? It took them two months to go to the nearest space-time transfer array. The space-time transfer arrays here were quite similar to the ones in the Endless Territories. Clearly, the two universes had very similar systems of cultivation. Be it by flying, teleporting, or using space-time transfer arrays, the group advanced through the alternate universe for more than a hundred years. Finally, they reached a specific chaos planet that was the core of a space-time transfer array they had to pass through. Deep within a gorge on this planet, there were a series of estates where other world-level cultivators resided. Crackle. Pop. A figure was seated in the lotus position by the banks of a lake, his entire body wreathed in flames that didn't cause any damage to the nearby mud or grass at all. Swoosh. A streak of light flew towards him from afar. It was a green-haired world god who was carrying a great axe on his back and radiated an aura of great strength. Five world-level cultivators arrived, the green-haired world god growled. Oh? Five dared to trespass in our territory? Do they have extraordinary backgrounds? 
The flaming figure asked. They should be outsiders. I've never seen them before, the green-haired world god said. Never seen them before? Mm. We should know all of the world-level cultivators in the ten or so territories around us. If we don't know them, they must have come from very far away. The flaming figure let out a hoarse chuckle. Inform the other leaders. Begin our preparations for killing these outsiders. We discovered them, so I insist on getting a full share. Understood, the green-haired world god said respectfully. By now, we've killed more than 300 world-level cultivators. Still, that's not enough. We aren't even close to our quota of a thousand, the flaming figure mused softly. The Desolate Era Chapter 27, Ambushed Ji Ming's squad of five descended upon this chaos planet. They were able to see the heart of the space-time transfer array far off in the distance. Here in this alternate universe, cultivators also used chaos nectar and chaos jewels for bartering. Halt! An elder god standing in front of a beautiful palace suddenly bellowed at them. Although the five before him were all world-level cultivators, and although he was merely an elder god, he was a representative of a universe-wide organization which dominated this entire universe, the Church of Annihilation. Every single space-time transfer array in this alternate universe was governed by the Church of Annihilation. No major powers would dare to challenge the might and prestige of the Church of Annihilation. In this universe, the Church of Annihilation was an utterly exalted and supreme organization. We are going to the Star of Cricket, Heartlord Soulwind said with a smile. Here in the alternate universe, it was usually Soulwind's responsibility to meet and speak with the locals. The space-time transfer array is currently under maintenance. It'll be half a month before it can be activated, the Elder God said. Half a month? Ning and the others looked at each other, feeling quite helpless. Space-time transfer arrays did indeed require maintenance and repairs. If they were not given the proper maintenance, these ancient devices would slowly begin to break down. Ning's group had no choice but to leave for now. They traveled a few hundred kilometers away and landed within a beautiful mountain valley. Let's wait here for half a month, Heartlord Soulwind said. The Church of Annihilation truly is incredible. It was actually able to take complete control over this entire alternate universe. The Endless Territories is just one part of our own universe, but it's still divided up into many different organizations, Prince Greatjoy sent mentally. He couldn't help but sigh. In the Endless Territories, more than 99% of the people belong to the Dao Alliance, but the Dao Alliance is dispersed into many different locations. Everyone operates independently, with some training and some fighting. As for the space-time transfer arrays, the local schools and sects are allowed to run them. Ning chuckled as well. The Dao Alliance was quite relaxed, but that was why Ning liked it. It granted freedom and governed on a principle of non-governance. Cultivators, by our very nature, wish for freedom, Soulwind said. The reason why the Brightshore Kingdom is so unified is because the Almighty Hegemon is so strong as to completely overpower everyone else. The reason why the Ionians are so unified is because if they aren't unified, they'll be wiped out as a race. The Dao Alliance is simply too strong, forcing them to be unified if they wish to survive. The reason why those other top-tier organizations are unified is also because they are few in number. They can't not be unified. And this alternate universe? Fire Surge asked. Ning was curious as well. For this universe to be completely unified is truly inconceivable. Absolutely. The five of them were all extraordinary figures. In the future, if they worked hard in their cultivation, they would become truly monstrous Dao Lords. They were all very proud individuals, but they felt the utmost of admiration and awe towards this organization which had dominated and unified an entire universe. The five of them continued to wait there quietly, drinking while chatting. But of course, when they discussed sensitive matters they sent mental messages to each other. Eh. Their faces tightened at the exact same instant. Boom. The world around them changed as countless roaring waves came crashing out towards them in an apocalyptic scene. 
The wave swept straight towards the five of them, and at the edges of the endless waves there were a number of world-level cultivators who were riding the waves forward. They stared at Ning's group of five, their eyes filled with murderous intentions. We've just been waylaid. Ning's group knew what was happening. Elder brothers, let me handle these waves. Fire Surge was dressed in deep blue robes and his face was grim and cold. He was quite humble when speaking to Ning and the other three, but he was filled with nothing besides icy contempt towards these attacking cultivators. He waved his hand. Boom! A ring of seemingly ordinary black water began to spread out in every direction around him. The ring of black water was able to easily defend against the roaring waves. What? The Empyrean Divine Water Formation we set up using 109 world-level cultivators was blocked with such ease? The attackers were all horrified and shocked. Break! Fire Surge let out a cold snort, and the roaring waves of water suddenly were pushed backwards, causing the entire formation to collapse. It was only meant to bind and capture them anyhow. If we can't capture them, we will just kill them. A golden-winged world god issued mental orders to the others. Although he could tell that Fire Surge wasn't an easy person to deal with, he was very confident in his group's abilities. Given their overwhelming advantage in numbers, he truly felt no concern whatsoever. The awe-inspiring horde of world-level cultivators suddenly switched to a different formation, causing blurry light to spread out amongst their ranks. All of them were now reinforced by the formation they were using, and they charged towards Ning's group. They really are courting death. Prince Greatjoy let out a cold laugh as he slapped out with his left hand. His left palm instantly expanded to become 30,000 meters in size, and it emanated an aura of dazzling golden light. This dazzling golden palm moved terrifyingly fast as space-time twisted and distorted in front of it. It was clearly quite far away from the attackers, but it somehow appeared directly in front of them in an instant. Boom! 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 Every single world-level cultivator touched by the golden palm was reduced to dust. Is that a Dao Lord? That has to be a Dao Lord. What the hell is going on? He clearly has the aura of a world god. He's actually a Dao Lord pretending to be a world god. The attackers were instantly scared silly. Skyfire Brightshore let out a laugh. There are quite a few attackers. Let me handle them. Guar. Skyfire opened his mouth and let out a loud, furious roar as flames began to belch forth. The flames instantly covered the entire area and began blasting out in every direction. It must be understood that although Prince Greatjoy was very strong, each of his palm strikes was only able to kill roughly 10 or so world-level cultivators at once. This ring of fire, however, spread out in every direction. There was no way for anyone to run at all. Ah! Some of the weaker Chaos Immortals were instantly burnt into dust. Even the world gods with weaker bodies were burnt to ashes. Run away immediately. These five world-level cultivators are way too strong. They are probably all transcendent world gods. Why is our luck such shit? Some of the strongest world gods, along with ones who had access to decent protective divine abilities, were able to endure the roaring flames. Just over 20 of them were able to survive and quickly began to flee in every direction. Although some of them were incredibly strong, they no longer wished to continue this fight against Ning's group. Ning nodded as he watched. The flames which Skyfire Brightshore had unleashed seemed to be slightly more powerful than his chaos level, Novescent's Thunder, technique had been. Skyfire, let me give you a hand. Ning let out a chuckle. Whoosh. Seven streaks of Dao lightning and seven streams of Dao water instantly spread out to cover an area of a million kilometers, catching all of the fleeing world gods within their area of effect. The Dao lightning and the Dao water were simply too fast, there was no way for them to escape. The lightning and water all transformed into enormous great swords that danced through the skies. The entire region of a million kilometers became transformed into an enormous domain of chaotic might. The terrifyingly powerful sword intent filling this domain tore at the bodies of every single world god, 
resulting in many of them ground to dust by the clashing and grinding power of the lightning sword intent and water sword intent. It was like an enormous millstone had ground them to bits. The Inyang sword domain, at maximum power, was something which quickly caused even Dao lords of the first step to perish. Even if Ning expanded the zone to cover an area of a million kilometers, Dao lords of the first step would still suffer very heavy injuries, to say nothing of these world-level cultivators. Brother Dark North, your domain truly is formidable. Let me finish the stragglers. Heart Lord Soul Wind let out a laugh, then turned his gaze to the two world gods who had made it very far away and were still struggling to flee. Why are they this? Powerful? Even our transcendent world gods were wiped out? B but. Where the hell did these five come from? The two world gods who had managed to survive the Inyang sword domain were terrified senseless by now. Of the two, one was a transcendent world god while the other was merely a supreme world god. The one thing they shared in common was that both had incredibly powerful protective divine abilities. There was no way for them to actually escape the domain itself, but their bodies were tough enough to let them survive for a moment longer. What is going? I. Aha, death, sweet death. Once I die, I'll have no more worries. Boom. Boom. The two world gods simultaneously fell to the ground, completely lifeless. Heart Lord Solwyn's lips curved upward slightly. Those two were both elite world gods, but you were able to make them both commit suicide, Soul Wind. Admirable, admirable. Ning nodded. They were utterly terrified and driven to the brink of despair by your attacks, my friends. That's why it was so easy for me to deal with them. Heart Lord Soul Wind smiled. Ning and the other three, however, were still shocked by what had happened. The ability to force a world god to commit suicide? Although the four of them were impressive, none of them were capable of such a thing. True heart force cultivators really were terrifying. The five of them quickly cleaned up the battlefield, getting rid of the corpses and dividing up the spoils. These world-level cultivators weren't bad. They were fairly strong. Prince Greatjoy frowned. There were actually more than ten supreme world gods and three or four transcendent world gods. It doesn't really make sense for there to have been that many transcendent world gods, does it? The Desolate Era Chapter 28, The Reason The alternate universe is fairly similar to our own. Ji Ning also felt that something was off. Logically speaking, less than one in a thousand world gods would have reached a transcendent level of power. For this group of a hundred world-level cultivators to have so many supreme world gods and three or four transcendent world gods doesn't make sense. Where the hell did they come from? Ning and the other four had effortlessly dominated the group, not giving them any chance to fight back before perishing. Thus, Ning's group was only able to come to a general approximation regarding how strong they were. Let me take a look. Skyfire Brightshore immediately soared into the skies, then cast his gaze down upon the entire chaos planet as his eyes blazed with fire. Echem. Let me take a look on the other side of the chaos planet. The chaos planet was a sphere, and on the other side of the planet they ended up finding a large number of estates. They should be residing in that place. Soulwind cast his gaze downwards. An. I see quite a few restrictive formations. There's no way to use God Sense to scan the place. We killed 126 world-level cultivators, but there are nearly 150 estates there. Ning frowned. Are there still others? Even if there are, they would have fled, Prince Greatjoy said. This guess was correct. A group of 19 world-level cultivators were hiding within an empty part of the primordial chaos. All of them had ugly looks on their faces as they traded glances. In their eyes could be seen both terror and joy. Thank goodness we were responsible for keeping watch over the headquarters. That was terrifying. All those life tablets went poof in an instant. None of them survived. When they thought back to the sight of all those life tablets shattering at the same instant, they couldn't help but be seized by terror once more. The world-level cultivators had all left behind life tablets so that the others would know if they were alive or not. 
Just now, when this group had been convening in their headquarters, they realized to their astonishment that a total of 126 life tablets had shattered apart in the same instant. Even the life tablets of the terrifyingly strong transcendent world gods who they had dreaded were quickly shattered. It had been a complete massacre. Although they didn't personally witness the battle, the wholesale annihilation of the life tablets was enough for them to guess at what had happened. They had been so terrified that they immediately fled from their headquarters and used a spatial teleportation to escape. Some of them had extremely powerful protective divine abilities. Logically speaking, even if they were attacked by Dao Lords they would have merely been captured and drawn into magic treasures to be slowly ground down. But, all those life tablets shattered in almost the blink of an eye. What the hell did they run into? Those five world-level cultivators, was a major power hiding amongst their ranks? The lucky survivors speculated wildly, but were unable to go beyond speculation. They would never dare to return to that place. And so, just like that this formidable local organization disappeared, never to be heard of again. This group of world-level cultivators truly had been quite powerful. Unfortunately, they had run into Ning's group of five. These five were the most freakishly talented of the freakishly talented. Anyone besides the five of them would have found it extremely difficult to deal with this group. For fear that this matter might have unexpected repercussions, Ning's group decided to temporarily hide within a vacant region of primordial chaos as Prince Greatjoy stealthily investigated the matter. Given my abilities, not even Dao Lords would be able to detect my actions unless they are even stronger than I am in the Dao of Spacetime. In terms of mastery over Spacetime, Prince Greatjoy's level of expertise was superior to even that of many Dao Lords of the Second Step who specialized in the Dao of Spacetime. As for those who weren't particularly skilled? Not even Dao Lords of the Fourth Step would be able to discover any traces of him. This was why the Dao of Spacetime was such a terrifying Dao. Nothing seems to be happening whatsoever. It seems as though that was nothing more than an ordinary robbery attempt. Bandits were common in every universe, and there were many within the Brightshore Kingdom as well. Even in the Endless Territories, there were world-level cultivators who delighted in waylaying and robbing others. This was the fastest way of acquiring treasures, a way far faster and safer than adventuring in ruins left behind by Dao Lords. A sufficiently prepared ambush was far safer than adventuring in unexplored regions. Time slowly flowed on. Ning's group continued to advance, behaving even more cautiously than before as they moved through one territory after another. Despite that, they still suffered yet another ambush. Even though they were moving with extreme caution, they had suffered two consecutive ambushes in a row. As for the results were, there were no surprises whatsoever. Anyone who dared to ambush Ning's group was absolutely courting death. Rumble. Three world gods were swept away by an enormous wave of water and smashed violently upon the ground. The earth shuddered and split apart from the force of the collision. The three world gods hurriedly rose to their feet, then stared in terror at the five world-level cultivators who were slowly descending upon them from the skies. They are terrifyingly strong. W.A. too strong. How can world gods be this strong? The eyes of the three world gods were filled with terror. They would never forget what they had just seen. That terrifying finger art, every single wave of the finger had caused world-level cultivators to perish. That terrifying wave, it had crushed more than half of them to death in an instant. As for the ones who wanted to flee, they were slain by crashing bolts of lightning. In the end, only the three of them had managed to survive, and only because their foes let them live. Only now did they realize that it was possible for world-level cultivators to reach such a level of power. You can continue to live, Prince Greatjoy said coldly, but you have to do as I say. Why why yes. The three world gods hurriedly nodded. Swear a lifeblood oath that you will never divulge what happened today to anyone. In addition, swear that you will honestly answer any questions we ask you, Prince Greatjoy ordered grimly. Yes. The three world gods didn't even think about fighting back or arguing as they all obediently swore the lifeblood oaths. All three of them were dressed in grey armored robes. 
Normally, these grey-robed cultivators were viewed as nightmares by other cultivators, but today they were filled with the utmost of reverence towards their captors. They put away their grey armored robes and lowered their heads, for fear of offending the five before them. Why did you attempt to waylay us? Prince Greatjoy asked as Ning and the others watched. There were only five of you, and all of you were world-level cultivators. We thought you'd be easy to deal with. A skinny man with a long beard hurried to be the first to respond. No other reasons? You were going to kill us just because we were easy targets? Prince Greyjoy was puzzled, and he swept his gaze across the other two. Right. That is the case. The three all immediately nodded. Ning and the others exchanged a glance. This was the third time they had been ambushed in the past month. It must be understood that it would take them roughly a thousand years to travel from the transversal conduit to the Archaeus region. It would make sense for them to be ambushed once every decade, but for them to be ambushed three times in one month made no sense. And yet, apparently this was nothing more than a normal attempt at highway robbery. We were ambushed three times in one month. Prince Greatjoy frowned. Do you know why? You don't know? The skinny, bearded world god looked at him. Speak. Prince Greatjoy's eyes lit up, as did the eyes of Ning and the others. Because of nine god stars, the prisoner said hurriedly. Nine god stars has already formally announced its criteria for accepting new disciples. Ning and the others exchanged a glance. Nine god stars was an extremely large organization. They only accept world-level cultivators as new members, and you have to have personally slain at least a thousand other world-level cultivators before you are qualified to join them, the bearded man said. Once news of this spread, not only did this cause an enormous stir in the 18 territories. Next to nine god stars, it also caused a stir in hundreds of nearby territories. Many extremely powerful world-level cultivators began to furiously hunt down and kill down other world-level cultivators. It has been an absolute massacre. Weaker cultivators like us have nowhere to hide, and so we have to join together in large numbers to stay safe. What? You have to kill a thousand world-level cultivators in order to become a member of the sect? Skyfire Brightshore was shocked. That's a bit crazy. Heartlord Soulwind frowned. This entrance requirement, Ning shook his head. To kill a thousand world-level cultivators was an extremely difficult. Even enslaved, oath-bound world-level slaves were only willing to serve because it gave them a chance to stay alive. If a master insisted on slaying his slaves, the slave would probably go all out in fighting back. If the slave was going to die no matter what, he would generally prefer to die fighting. When Dalord Windsource was about to die, his slaves would often curse and berate him as they no longer had anything to fear. Even if you were an extremely powerful cultivator, after many battles, some unexpected variables might occur. You might have worked hard to kill several hundred cultivators, only to end up dead in ditch for some reason. To actually kill a thousand would be very, very difficult. Nine God Stars is the number one sect within hundreds of territories, after all. Next to the bearded man was an extremely muscular world god dressed in scale armor. He said hurriedly, nine god stars has nine major branches, and each branch is led by a major power who is at the verge of the Tao merge. As for its most powerful expert, that person is ranked as one of the elite paladins of the Church of Annihilation. Ning's group knew all this. The Church of Annihilation was in control of this entire alternate universe and was an utterly enormous organization. The Paladins of the Church of Annihilation held high positions and were extremely respected. Nine God Stars will only be accepting 18 disciples this time, the Scaled World God said hurriedly. They'll stop once the final slot is taken. I hear that the top three will be given Arceus Medallions and be sent to the legendary Arceus region. Arceus Medallions? Ning and the others were all intrigued. Arceus medallions were extremely valuable. The almighty Hegemon had sent his will through the transversal conduit and used many schemes but had only been able to accumulate a few of those medallions over the course of countless years. That's why everyone in the surrounding territories has gone mad. 
Not only will they have a chance of becoming a disciple, they'll even have a chance of gaining a legendary Arceus medallion. All of the transcendent world-level cultivators in the nearby territories have all hastened over here. There's nowhere for weaker world gods like us to run. The bearded man shook his head. That's why you'll encounter ambushes throughout these territories. Most likely, it'll only come to an end after nine god stars accepts its 18th and final disciple. Finally, Ning's group had an answer as to why there was such a high concentration of powerful cultivators. It was because the weaker ones had all been killed. The ones still alive were fairly strong, and some had actually hastened to this place from other territories. If they knew that all five of us each hold an Arceus medallion. I can't even imagine how many world gods would come to surround and attack us. There might even be Dao lords coming for us. Skyfire Brightshore sent an amused mental message to the others. Huh, we definitely can't let them find out. Now that they knew the reason behind this, they still felt some pressure, but they also felt much more relaxed. It seems as though we will often be attacked over the next century or so, Prince Greatjoy sent. Everyone, let's not be too reckless. The Mighty Nine God Stars sect is behind this matter. If we attract the attention of their experts, we will be doomed. Right. Ning and the others all nodded. The Desolate Era. Chapter 29, Adventures. Ji Ning and the others were very careful. However, the Nine God Stars sect had sent out dozens of Dao Lords of the First Step to keep watch over the place, with the goal of preventing some truly dazzlingly talented world-level cultivators from being surrounded, trapped, and killed. These Dao Lords had all broken through via usage of pseudo-samsara pills. These Dao Lords of the First Step were scattered across the local territories, keeping a secret lookout for particularly dazzling and talented world-level cultivators. If they found one, they would be permitted to return to the sect in advance. When roaming, they would actively emanate their Samsara Dao Lord auras, making it so that the world-level cultivators would not dare to act against them. There was a significant difference in power between them and Samsara Dao Lords, after all. Ji Ning, for example, would probably be merely a match for Dao Lords of the first step if he was relying solely on his sword arts. It was thanks to the Azure Flower Mist energy strengthening his body and making it comparable to a Dao Lords that he was able to rise above them in power. Fire Surge Great Joy, and the others had their own divine abilities and secret arts as well. Generally speaking, it was very difficult to rely on mere divine abilities to defeat those at a completely different level. The Fogstone Apocalypse was a very good example of a divine ability that didn't qualify. Only some truly, devastatingly powerful divine abilities would do the trick, such as the Five Seal Sword Dao of Emperor Mirrors now. Alas, there was no way for Ning to use it. Mighty divine abilities, secret arts, powerful innate gifts like Skyfires, supportive techniques like Ning's Azure Flower Mist Energy, this was what was needed, along with ridiculously profound insights into the Tao, for a world-level cultivator to be able to slay a Tao Lord of the first step. And of course, not even the likes of Birchalu would be able to slay a Tao Lord of the second step. Thus, it was generally quite safe for Tao Lords of the first step to be used to patrol most territories. But of course, the Nine God Stars sect naturally would keep this type of mission a secret. Those world-level cultivators all believed that the only way to succeed was by killing a thousand of their peers, which was why they remained as berserk as ever. Damn. Sixteen years after they entered the sphere of influence of the Nine God Stars sect. Ning and the others were in an empty part of space. They exchanged glances with each other, their faces grim. Great joy, you were a bit rash this time. Heartlord Soulwind had a rather ugly look on his face as he stared at the magic treasures and suits of armor floating in front of them. We had no other options. When we refused to follow that Dao Lord of the first step, he tried to abduct us by force. You know that we cannot reveal our true identities. Prince Greatjoy had an ugly look on his face as well as he spoke mentally to the other four. We lied to him and told him that we are members of other sects, but he completely ignored us. We had no choice but to kill him. We killed a Dao Lord of the Nine God Stars sect. Even though he was merely a Dao Lord of the first step. 
I'm sure that the Nine God Stars sect has already found out and is sending people to investigate. Fire Surge was worried as well. Ning and Skyfire both had solemn looks on their faces as well. What were they to do? The actual killing had been quite enjoyable. That Dao Lord of the First Step had been courting death, acting and speaking in such a dominating manner towards them. Any of the five were capable of slaughtering that Dao Lord. But in the end, it had been Prince Greatjoy who punched out with a fist and completely crushed him to death. We had no other options, but don't worry, Prince Greatjoy sent. Although the Nine God Stars sect would immediately be notified of his death, it'll take them some time for their investigators to be sent out and to arrive at this place. And, they can forget about discovering anything. Prince Greatjoy's eyes were as cold as ice. Give me one hour. I will completely scramble space-time here and make it impossible for them to invert the flow of time, unless they bring someone who is ten times more skilled than myself in the Tao of space-time. All right. Ning and the others felt stunned. Right. Great Joy had reached a tremendously high level of skill in the Tao of space-time. If he was to scramble space-time in the surrounding area, it would be difficult for even the Nine God Stars sect to find out what had happened here. At the very least, it would buy them some time. Ugh. They had been doing their best to be low-key, but it was impossible for them to completely avoid showing at least part of their true power when they had to deal with so many ambushes. In addition, they had no idea that there were Dao Lords patrolling about in secret. In the end, one of them actually chased the five of them down. The five didn't dare to actually go visit the Nine God Star sect, as once their identities were revealed they would quite possibly face annihilation. Ning's group destroyed all the evidence at the scene and scrambled space-time, then transformed into different appearances. They even summoned quite a few world-level retainers and servants from their estate worlds, then continued to venture forth in a Nine Cultivator squad. Things happened just as they had predicted. Roughly two years later, a Dao Lord of the Third Step from the Nine God Stars sect arrived in the place where they had slain the first Dao Lord. Given how powerful the Nine God Stars sect was, for them to calculate where their Dao Lord had died was an easy task. But of course, to actually divine the identity of the killer was virtually impossible. When World God Northrest had died, there had been no way for Vast Heaven Palace to divine who had done it. They had to have more variables to work with in order to lower the difficulty of the numerancy divination. Eh. Space-time has been scrambled here. When the Tao Lord of the Third Step sought to reverse the flow of time and see what had happened, all he saw was a field of completely distorted and chaotic space-time. There was no way to investigate at all. Did that servant of mine offend a major power who was skilled in the Tao of space-time? The Tao Lord murmured to himself, perhaps my servant offended him, resulting in my servant being killed, and yet, that major power did not wish to become an enemy of our Nine God Star sect, and so he scrambled space-time here? Dao lords who walked the Dao of space-time were notoriously tough to deal with. When this Dao lord of the third step realized that space-time had been completely scrambled here, he couldn't help but feel sour about this matter. In the end, the Nine God Stars sect was still the most dominating force in the hundreds of nearby territories. How could they possibly just let this matter come to an end? However, if they wanted to get to the bottom of this matter they would have to invite a true master of the Tao of space-time to head out from their headquarters and investigate in person. The entire sect, however, only had two Tao lords who were skilled in the Tao of space-time. One was a Tao lord of the second step, while the other was a venerable figure who had reached the verge of the Tao merge and was the third most respected figure of the entire sect. The Tao lord of the second step wasn't willing to take the risk, whereas there was no one capable of giving orders to the verge-level Tao Lord. Thus, more than a hundred years passed before the latter finally decided to head out and take a look. What's this? When this mighty Tao Lord unscrambled space-time, he was immediately shocked and stunned by what he discovered. Five world-level cultivators. One of them attacked and slew a Tao Lord of the first step with a single blow. This Tao Lord was stunned. Where the hell did these freaks come from? Although I wasn't able to see how strong the other four were, this one is incredibly strong. And, judging from how he scrambled space-time, 
he has to be an extremely skilled master of the Tao of space-time. Where the hell did they come from? Not even the entire Nine God Stars sect had a single disciple who was this freakishly talented. There was no way for him to know, of course, that this man was an honorary disciple of an almighty hegemon in a different universe and one of the most elite members of the Brightshore Kingdom. The Nine God Stars sect was nothing compared to the Brightshore Kingdom. It must be understood that the Brightshore Kingdom had entire squads of freakishly strong Tao Lords who were comparable to eternal emperors. We have to find and recruit this person into our Nine God Stars sect. I'll chase him down. He gave the order, and the entire Nine God Stars sect sprang into action. He truly would have loved to take on such a freakishly talented disciple. He himself walked the Tao of space-time, and it was incredibly rare for him to encounter someone of such talent who walked his Tao. Alas, by this point in time Ning's group of five had long ago escaped from the Nine God Stars sect sphere of influence. The Nine God Stars sect was extremely influential in their local cluster of several hundred territories, but beyond that their influence and power dropped rapidly. Aside from their slaying of that Tao Lord of the First Step, Ning's group encountered another extremely dangerous situation during their journey. Ning's group accidentally ran into a nation of special lifeforms that was wandering the primordial chaos. That nation of special lifeforms was actually established atop the shell of an utterly enormous turtle, and the turtle-like creature was clearly in a state of hibernation, slumbering as it drifted through the void of space. This part of the journey should have been a safe one. Who would have thought that they'd run into such an unusual nation? Ning's group ran into this nation by accident, and they were immediately attacked by one of those special lifeforms which sought to eat them alive. Ning's group was forced to fight back, which only attracted the attention of even more of those special lifeforms. Fortunately, that giant slumbering turtle did not wake up. Ning and the others all had the feeling that the turtle's aura was utterly terrifying. Once it woke up, it would be incredibly easy for it to kill all five of them. No matter what they would have tried, they still probably wouldn't have been able to survive the slumbering turtle's attack. In the end, Ning and the others joined forces and managed to just barely escape. From start to finish, they didn't dare to actually kill so much as a single one of those special lifeforms, for fear of stirring the hornet's nest and waking that giant turtle. Aside from the Nine God Stars sect and the Titanic turtle, the other problems they encountered were largely irrelevant. The Arceus Region We've finally arrived. Ning's group of five stood in the air, staring off into the distance. In front of them was a region filled with countless roiling clouds that flickered with violet light. This gigantic region covered by clouds was the Arceus region. But of course, this was nothing more than the tip of the iceberg, a minuscule part of the massive, actual region. None of them even knew exactly how far off the Arceus region stretched. After journeying for 1,605 years, Ning's group had finally reached the Arceus region. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.